Hi, welcome to video number six. Today we're going to be talking about how the electron is located and organized around the nucleus of the atom. If you may recall from video number four, we saw that Rutherford had told us that the nucleus contained protons and neutrons, and around that we had the electrons. Today we're going to learn then a little bit more about how those electrons orbit around the nucleus. But before I can do that, I need to talk a little bit about the experimental evidence that people had in order to create this understanding of how electrons move and orbit around the nucleus. All right? So you may or may not recall that if we have white light and we pass it through a prism, we are going to get a rainbow or basically a, a continuous spectrum, spectrum in which we can see all the visible colors of light. Now if we did the same thing to uh, the light being emitted by a hot gas, something for example what would happen if we were to look at the light being emitted right now by this hot neon gas in a neon tube, we would be able to uh, see that it would emit certain lights. So let's go ahead and look at that more in detail. Let's look at the tube itself and let's look at what um, the spectrum that it produces looks like. In this particular case, what you can observe is that the tube that we have here has a hot neon, and that neon is being heated by passing very high energy electrons. Those electrons are going to excite the gas and going to make it emit light. When we pass the light from the neon, through a prism, what we ob observe is this arrange, uh, arrangement of colors, all right? And you can see that they're still basically in the same arrangement as the rainbow, but we are only seeing certain lines of color. There is a lot of lines that would be in the rainbow that are not present because only certain frequencies of light are being produced by that uh, orange neon light. All right. If we had a white light, a pure white light, we would be producing all of the different colors, but a gas can only produce certain um, colors of light, uh, of light because of the electron transitions that it can make. And we will talk more about that in just a second. So a gas can produce what is called an emission line spectrum. All right? and that is located over here in the center. If we were to shine white light through a cold gas and separate that light, we would get something that looks like a combination of this uh, continuous spectrum and the line spectrum. But instead of having bright lines uh, present, what we're going to have are missing lines where light is being absorbed and taken away from the white light. All right? Those experimental results, and especially those for the hydrogen atom is what Bohr used in order to create a new model of the atom based on the ideas of Rutherford and based on these experimental results. He noticed that line spectra are produced by electrons that are moving either up or down in energy levels and those would produce absorption spectrum if they're moving up because energy must be taken up or um, the emission spectrum which gives off energy uh, as you're moving down to lower energy levels. All right, So he did this for hydrogen and you can see that for hydrogen the emission lines and the absorption lines match perfectly. All right, They are negatives of each other. You can think about it that way. All right, they, If you were to put both the absorption and the emission spectrum together, you would get the full uh, continuous spectrum, all of the colors of the rainbow. But only certain ones of them are actually being absorbed or emitted by an atom of hydrogen. What that tells Bohr is that those are exactly equal to the energy differences between two energy levels. All right. So in order to go from, let's say, from the first floor to the second floor, you have to go a certain exact amount all right, in order to be completely in the second floor. All right. Think about it if you're like going in an elevator. All right. 
the elevator will not drop you off in the one and a half floor. You have to go exactly the certain amount of height up in order to be dropped off at the second floor. The same thing happens with uh, electrons. They have to go from one energy level exactly to the next, and in order to do that, they have to gain or lose a very exact amount of energy, which is equal to that difference between the levels. Each one of these photons that we see, each one of these colors of light, represents one of the differences between energy levels. So what Bohr does is he makes this into an atomic model. All right? He says, one, electrons can only exist at certain allowed orbits, and we're going to call those energy levels. So the word orbit is now out, out the window. We're going to think about energy levels is the place where electrons are located around um, the nucleus. Two, there's a maximum number of electrons that you can find in each energy level, each energy level, and that is given to you by the formula 2n squared. All right. So if we look at this, for the first energy level, n equals one. That's the name, the number of the energy level. Well, two times 1 squared, we all, always remember that the squares go first, so 1 squared is 1 times 2 is equal to 2. That's the maximum number of electrons in energy le level number 1. In energy level number 2, we can have 2 times 2 squared. 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8, so 8 valence electrons, sorry, so 8 electrons in the second energy level. If n were equal to 3, it's 2 times 3 squared, 3 squared is 9, times 2, 18, and so on and so forth. If we were in the 4th, it would be 32. If we were in the 5th, it would be 50, all right? So, this sets a maximum number of electrons that can be there and allows us to think of how electrons can move up and down and when they're allowed to move up and down. The next two rules go together. Electrons can gain energy in order to move to a higher energy level by absorbing a photon of light, a particle of light, and it has to have a specific wavelength. Why? Because that specific wavelength represents the energy difference between the two levels that it's moving. Similarly, electrons can move down to lower energy levels if they give off or they emit a photon of light. By doing that, they're giving away energy. All right? And that energy has to be, again, that same difference between energy level number two, for example, and energy level number one. How would that look? Well, let's look at that just as a quick uh, representation. If we have energy levels number one, number two, and number three. And yes, they are a little bit different in uh, the differences. The difference between energy levels becomes smaller as you go higher and higher. If we have an electron in energy level number one, and it wants to jump to energy level number two, it must absorb a photon. The energy of that photon must be equal to the difference in energy between energy levels 2 and 1. If we now have an electron in energy level number 2 and it wants to jump to energy level number 3, it too must absorb a photon. But in this case, the energy of the photon must be equal to the energy difference between 3 and two, because those are the particular energy levels that you have. Those would mean that they are removing light from white light. If you have an electron now in energy level number three, and it wanted to drop down all the way to energy level number one, it would have to give off a photon of light, all right? 
it has to give off a photon of light, and that energy of that photon would have to equal to the difference between energy level number one and energy level number three, because that is the transition that we are observing. If all the electrons in an atom are at the lowest energy possible, all right, and that doesn't mean that they're all in energy level number one, because there's a limit to how many electrons you can have in energy level number one, but if there are the lowest possible energy, if you all the energy levels have been filled completely, we call that a ground state. All right? Ground state is the natural state of most atoms, is where they don't have any extra energy. If we have excited electrons, all right, excited electrons are those that are at higher energy levels than the ground state, all right? Well, excited electrons are the ones that emit uh, light in order to go down and return to lower energy levels. So if we look at this little diagram, this is maybe uh, something that will help you understand what we were just doing in the lines, um, but more in, a, in an orbital, in an orbit kind of fashion, all right? So if we see here, we have atoms, or sorry, we have electrons that are excited, that are at a higher energy level, all right? Now, that excited electron wants to return back down to a lower energy. Everything in the universe wants to be at a lower energy. So it wants to come back down from energy level number two to energy level number one. In order to do that, in order to jump, it's going to have to emit this photon which has that energy difference between the two. All right? And that photon is what produces the color line that we see. So each one of the lines that we saw for the hydrogen spectrum is produced by a particular jump between one energy level and another energy level, all right? So this is where Bohr gets us. He gets us to explain and understand a little bit more about how electrons gain and lose energy. We will go ahead and next week, or in, in the next video, watch and learn more about how we then organize those electrons further, all right? Until next time.